Welcome to Camping with Steve. We're coming up to the Alberta Rockies here, and we're going for a few days here, just filming the good, the bad, everything that happens on this journey. We don't have a destination, we're just aimlessly wandering. And we're going down this logging road here, which looks like it would destroy most vehicles, so it'll be a good test for the bus. Um, no services, next 170 kilometers that way. Uh, next service is 44 kilometers that way. That one says next service is 125 kilometers. And then uh, as soon as we pass the small town in Nordeg there, it's another 100 kilometers with no services. So there's not a lot of services, um, you could say. It's a busy road today. <laughs> That uh, crummy logging road brought us here. Uh, drink it in. I'm not sure how well that shows up on the DJI. Magnificent, magnificent, purely magnificent. However, it's also a popular spot. There's people all over the place here. And in this little recreation area, what they're doing this. Campfire's prohibited. I want a campfire. We even brought wood. So we're going to keep on looking and see where we can go from here. Well, this is where I found for us to camp tonight. We've got a fire pit there, of course. Uh, got our own little creek. Nobody else around for uh, quite a ways. There's somebody camped way down there and somebody camped way down that way but we got no neighbors here um uh, little mountains uh this is pretty good i'll just spin around so you can kind of see the 360 of where we're at today our little magic bus there yet to be named still taking suggestions and this is free um aside from there's an annual public land use pass that we need now <laughs> effective like two or three days ago so I signed up, I got one, it was 34 bucks with the GST around there, uh, with the taxes and everything. And well worth it in my opinion, because, uh, yeah, little places like this, if they do improve them with whatever the fees are, that'll be fantastic. I wish I brought my gold pan. Maybe I have something that'll be able to use for a pan. Of course, a little store-bought wood, because the fine is so expensive if I get caught harvesting it from the woods behind us here. Well, <laughs> sadly, there won't be a fire tonight. The uh, campground host came by and told me there's a fire restriction in place. And what that means is I can have a fire if it's in one of those approved steel fire rings, but this cobbled together little fire pit doesn't meet the bill. So we do have other options for dinner and we will, we will exercise those options. But of course, since the campground is completely set up now, it is time to enjoy a frosty mouthwatering step two after a long, hot day of driving around. But up here in the mountains, uh, it cools off real quick at night. Uh, real quick. Just checking out the wreck site here. Of course, I'm packing old trusty with me here, a little bear spray. Because these woods are crawling with cougars and they're saturated with grizzlies. This is their home. <laughs> so I haven't seen any evidence of them around the campsite here, but we're sure to run into a bear on this trip at some point. Uh, hopefully at a distance and hopefully with a camera in hand. Got the back road Bible. It's this back row of map books. And right now we're in Hummingbird Recreation Area on the Forestry Trunk Road here. And we're not sure where we're going to go. I'm scoping things out. I'd like to find a fire watch tower 
I want to see a waterfall. But in the meantime, we've got dinner to cook. Uh, not what I'd planned, but just throwing on some of those non bread pizzas that I did over the grill. But here we can do it in the oven. Because we've got the power to do that. And, uh, and we'll figure things out. But got a few days out here. Right now it is Friday. And we have to be back around home come Tuesday. So we got a bunch of camping to do. So let the adventures begin. Got this all dressed up. Yes, it's ham and pineapple. So there go the rest of my subscribers that didn't like the olives. In she goes. This is the air fryer combo oven type of thing that does everything. So we'll see how that goes. Getting real hungry. thing about this is well, maybe there's another light here that works oh awesome uh sorry love i didn't mean to blind you there uh yep cooks it up just fine this is good and crispy all the way around bottom included we're making progress here so chow down on this and then it's back to uh hunkering down Quite a good emergency meal, a little bit overdone, crunchier than I'd like, but it's a learning curve with this thing. We'll see uh, how we can improve on this, but great potential. Love the way it chars the top. They say air fryer is the buzzword, but what they mean is impingement oven, which is a little bit better than a convection oven, actually a lot better. That's what they use at, you know, Pizza Hut and stuff like that, Domino's. That's how they get that charred, crispy thing on the top. That's how they get you a pizza in like 15 minutes. So, mm. good to see it in a domestic appliance. Another day down, and there's nothing to do now but crawl into bed. And tomorrow, really fully explore this place and see what we're going to do as far as uh, our game plan over the next three or four days. So we'll see you guys in the morning. Cheers. Well, good morning, day number two of the adventures. So the bad so far has been no fires. Um, the good so far has been the view, but now the bad is I have to risk losing this site. I have to get up to cell phone service because I have to send crazy neighbors some money to pay the guys that are working at the house. So, um, yeah, that's the plan now is we're gonna as quickly as I can get to some cell service, uh, check the status of these fire bans, these alleged fire bans, the restrictions, and check the weather, email some money, and then uh, get back here. So, let the adventure begin. Good fortune shone upon us today. We made it into town. We found out there is no fire ban or restriction. We came back here. The site was still available, uh, which I found hard to believe because people have pulled in to even worse sites than this since we left. So that's great. It's cooled off here up in the mountains. So I'm uh, kind of double jacketing it right now, but that's okay because that allows me pockets for step twos when I'm out for a hike. So I think I'll probably do that right away. One thing that has really made me take note about bears here, and a reminder to keep a clean campsite, is just out on a hike and I see this. You know, these are some pretty big bear prints. And I'm not the ultimate bear track identifier, but I think when the toes are lined up pretty flat like that, along the front, I think that's more likely a grizzly. And, um, if I'm wrong, please let me know. Uh, that was my understanding. I think it was uh, due to where the pinky toe and the and the big toe would have been. But yeah, those those bear prints, they're going straight to the campground. Like the bus is like literally right there, 20 feet away. So it would have 
it would have come along the road, possibly through the campsite. So, of course, I got my bear spray with me, and I'm making some noise, talking to you guys to scare the bears away so nobody gets surprised around here. I've hiked on a ways. It looks like this used to be more of the major camping area, and it's got a little bit of a water issue right now. Uh, I think when that big flood came through, it decided to cut its own path, and it's done so. Right through there. But uh, I'm gonna cross over here, hopefully not fall in. Good job, Steve. All right, we'll check this out. That's a really nice spot, nice and uh, nice and private. Seems to be all there is here is, uh, hopefully this is a washroom because I've got to use it, but uh, there are a few signs saying what you can and can't do. Fairly popular area for equestrian use. And, uh, oh yes. Oh no. Camping tip number two is always bring toilet paper. But the sun is starting to get a little low on the horizon. I think it's probably time for a fire. So probably a couple kilometers back to the campsite. That's the plan right now. Fire time. Got a little compressed wax log. That should be the good fire starter here. A few other small pieces. Well, let's get this thing burning. The thing is like just compressed wax and sawdust. It's not very explosive or impressive, but I think it'll start. And we can burn this garbage. Oh, perfect. Well, second day camping can't be day two without step two. Alexander Keith's today. Not even that shaken up from my backpack uh, trip up the road. Seems just fine. So, of course, you know your Rubens. Uh, sauerkraut, Russian dressing or Thousand Island, and plus uh, corned beef or uh, smoked beef, and Swiss cheese. And I'm, I'm sure I, I'm sure there is the more authentic way than this, but uh, that's what it is. On sourdough, the pie oven. It's too hot to even touch right now. I'm still gonna take a bite though. this. Now this is a campfire sandwich, I'll tell you that. Getting tucked in for the night here. Got a big day tomorrow and we'll do more of a tour of the bus tomorrow but it's been really holding up for us pretty good. Uh, the view out this one in the morning, we'll see that. It's phenomenal. Uh, we've got our own private creek right there. A little fire going. Absolutely doesn't get better than this. So I will hit the hay here and see you guys in the AM. Oh, it's been raining all morning. That's okay because I like the rain and I've just been sleeping in here. There's a small break in the rain and I'm going to use that chance to go outside and get the back of the bus packed up because I want to move a little closer towards civilization. With the logging roads uh, in this rain, they can get pretty greasy. I think the road has been in pretty good shape so far. It's the right time of year. Uh, during the spring it would have been an absolute mess, but they've maintained it a bit. So I think it's time to uh, start looking at hitting the road.
didn't put these away right last night. I'm excited to come up with a more permanent generator and propane solution. Not that this is terribly inconvenient, but it is a far cry from those automatic inboard generators that just start on their own. Time to roll. I am always a sucker for a good waterfall, and there's one along the way, so we're gonna check this out. Got to the falls. I didn't know it would be a staircase like this on the way down there. Uh, due to my crippling fear of heights and the homemade looking staircase winding down an eroding peak, I've opted to stay up here and not have a panic attack. Uh, beautiful wife gladly volunteered though to go down and capture some footage of the falls for us. And uh, she, she does not suffer from the same height affliction as I do. <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much. That is so cool. We got a bunch of uh, rams out there just chowing down. Um, this is actually an airstrip and uh, it's a STARS Air Ambulance emergency landing spot. But I'm gonna let these rams feast there and I'll get out of their way because looks like they could ram into me with those horns. Well, we've reached some form of civilization here. There is a liquor store, there is a general store. Uh, there's no produce departments or meat departments or anything, so it's gonna be kind of a frozen meal or a pantry style meal. But uh, we will pick up some beer because we're here and replenish the supply. And we're gonna find a spot to camp around here. Uh, the logging roads on the way back were pretty good um, considering the rain and it helped keep the dust down, which is a constant struggle in here on the back roads because none of the doors really shut completely in a school bus. It's not like the, the good tight seals on a normal car door. So let's scavenge and see what we can find in this, uh, this general store. Well, we've arrived at a wreck site called Dry Haven. <laughs> I know, <laughs> we'll see about that. But it's also ironic because it's raining as well. Uh, the rain just began. So I'll show you around here. Uh, beautiful wife is just uh, made a trip to the restroom and um, that gives me a chance to show you guys what's going on in the bus here. With our obsession with magnets uh, we found these they're for lockers I guess for kids in school you can put pencils and stuff store more stuff in your locker so now they hold salt and pepper and it's sometimes they do uh, they come in various qualities <laughs> these were the dollar store ones uh, this one on here with the knives that's on there solid it's not going anywhere Above the coat rack, we've got one of these little dry erase magnetic things. And uh, 
It's good for passing along memos and a little reminder thing right on the wall, all magnetic. And so right beside the bed, bear spray holster, also one of these magnetic things. And a beer fits in these too, in case you were curious. The uh, stereo that naturally comes with this bus is horrendous. I can't hear it up front. Back here it sounds like a CB radio. So, brought a sound bra. Brought it from home actually. I think this will maybe turn into an addition on the bus because uh, it does have 120 outlet, but we have all the inverter juice in the world that we need to run this. So that should make it very comfortable to pair up our phones, be able to listen to something, hook it up to a Sirius uh, XM radio or something in the middle of nowhere, which we have been lately. And uh, that's that's the goal. Well, hey everybody, uh, Foresty Forest has shown up. Uh, How's it going everyone? <laughs> for those who don't know him, uh, I recommend you check him out. And not to leave you guys with uh, too big of a cliffhanger here, but uh, this adventure will probably be continued. So uh, thanks for watching so far. Please like and subscribe and please stay tuned for more future adventures. I'll see you guys soon. <laughs> Cheers, Forsty. <laughs>